In this exercise, I'm going to show you how to adjust and reinstate the positions of individual meshes inside of a model. I've gone ahead and saved my progress as bustedlegs.psd found inside the 043D tools folder, and it features this wonderfully fortuitous mistake in which three of the four legs of my chair model have fallen off the chair. Now, I call it a fortuitous mistake because it's the kind of thing that might happen to you, and I want you to have a sense of how to fix the mistake, particularly if you don't feel like getting to the bottom of it. We could, you know, spend a ton of time trying to work out what happened and try to make changes in SketchUp. But truth be told, where this model is concerned, it's very easy to fix the problems, especially since it's a really peculiar bug. Watch this. If you went ahead and just opened this bustedlakes.psd file, one of the things we need to do in order to see the bottom of the chair is I need to switch over to the camera rotate tool. And then I need to go ahead and rotate the chair. And notice the second I do, the legs spontaneously grab onto the chair. And that only happens, by the way, if you backstepped in the history panel, as I showed you at the end of the previous exercise, or if you went ahead and just opened this file. Anyway, if you go back in time, if you do any backstepping, then Photoshop automatically reassembles the legs the minute you move the camera. So talk about luck. That's an awesome thing. And I suppose that's one way to sometimes take care of the problem. But you may find that the problem's a little stickier than that. So I do want you to know the manual solution. And I do want you to know how to work with the mesh controls in general. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this tall chair layer by pressing the backspace key or the delete key on a Mac. Then go up to the 3D menu, choose new layer from 3D file, locate that tall chair.dae file, click open, and then, still armed with my 3D rotate tool, I'm going to go ahead and rotate this guy in 3D space like so. And this time, the legs do not automatically glom on, which is a good thing from a teaching perspective, of course. A bad thing from trying to get work done. But again, I want you to understand what's going on. Let's examine what's happening with these various mesh items. I'm going to go ahead and pan the camera to the right so that I'm moving this guy away from the panels. And I'm going to double click on the 3D thumbnail in order to bring up the 3D scene panel. And you can see that we have a ton of meshes, some meshes nested inside of other meshes. And the best way to figure out what's going on is to turn one of the meshes off and then turn it back on. Now, you might not be able to see this happening in the background, but that's the big header of the chair. So I'm going to double click on the name here and change it to header. And then this item right here, I believe is a seat, and indeed it is. And so I'll go ahead and rename ID3 seat like so, and twirl it closed. All right, next, I believe we come up on the legs. So if I turn this guy off, it's going to turn off this little item right there, which is the front right leg. So we'll go ahead and turn it back on and rename it leg FR so that I'm keeping track of what's going on. Might as well twirl these guys closed for a moment. ID 39, if I turn it off and then back on, that's the one leg that's in good shape. So I'll call it leg FL for front left, and I'm going to twirl it completely closed because it's fine. And then this one back here is ID 64, which is the back right leg. So let's go ahead and name this guy leg BR like so, and then twirl close the individual meshes inside that mesh because we need to come back to them. And then this guy I'm willing to bet is leg BL. Sure enough, it is. Go ahead and rename it as well. Now, you don't have to do this naming. I'm just doing it to keep track of what in the world I'm up to right now. So what's happening in the case of each one of these guys is leg FR, let's say. It specifically is this little mesh that's right there on the bottom of the seat, and it's in the right place. And then we've got these other two items here, including ID 30, which is the easiest to see. I'll turn it off. It's the big old leg. It's in the wrong place, of course. Turn it back on. Well, one of the things I could do is I could switch to my mesh tool. And I definitely need to switch to the mesh tool at any rate. And I should mention, by the way, the object tool affects the entire object, the entire contents of the 3D layer. It appears at the top of the list inside the 3D panel. It also appears inside the toolbox. Meanwhile, the next tool down is the camera tool. That affects your view of the entire scene so that you can move the objects and the lights all at once. And that tool also appears here inside the toolbox. The other tools only appear inside the 3D panel, and they include the mesh tool, which allows you to modify the individual meshes inside of a 3D layer. And then you've got the light tool as well, which lets you modify the lights and so forth. Anyway, I'm going to grab that mesh tool. And you've got the option of rotating the meshes. We don't want to do that. We want to move them. So I'm going to switch to the 3D mesh pan tool, which allows you to move the meshes back and forth. 
up and down. If you want to move them in and out, use the slide tool. I'm going to grab that pan tool and I'm going to drag this little guy here to a different location and hope at some point that I get him into place. But it's a little bit difficult. I could press the shift key in order to constrain my movement or I'll press control Z, command Z on the Mac to undo that movement. I could also take advantage of the widget and notice this guy here. If I drag on the right arrow and I'm going to go ahead and drag to the left, as soon as I press Control Z or Command Z on the Mac, Photoshop automatically switched me to the wrong mesh there. So I'll press Control Z, Command Z again, grab the right mesh, ID 22, and then drag on that red arrowhead. And I go ahead and move that guy right into place. And at some point, I'll go ahead and release. And then I'll look at my value, X 15.04, and I'll think, you know, I bet it's an even value. So I'll just go ahead and change it to 15. Now, what makes me think it's an even value? Well, I'm guessing it's a whole number of mistake that was made somewhere along the line, although I really have no idea. I'm just kind of making that up. But here's something else I could do. I could click on that leg FR item right there, which I know is in the right position, and I could check its position, X15, Y0, Z0. Why, by golly, I bet if I just clicked on ID30, which is this guy right there, and I changed his position from X30 to X15, then I fix the problem. And sure enough, I do. All right, you know what? Let's check out the opposite leg because it appears it just needs a Z-axis modification. And that would be this guy down there, leg BL. So let's twirl close leg FR so that we have a little more room to work. And I'm going to check out its position. And notice it says X0, Y0, Z negative 16. And that's the piece that's in the right place. If I turn it off, there it is right there. That's the guy that just left. And I turn it back on. Sure enough, he's in the right place. So let's go ahead and grab the cap there. And notice its Z value, its X and Y values are zero, just as we saw before, but its Z value is negative 32. So it's off by twice. So I'll go ahead and change that to negative 16, and it puts that right back in place. Then I'll grab ID 105, and I'll change it to negative 16 as well. And that goes ahead and reinstates the position of that. You know what? I bet this guy has X and Z problems associated with him because he was in alignment with both legs when he was out of place. So let's go ahead and try that. That would be leg BR. Notice the leg BR position, this is the good item, this guy right there, is everything we saw before. It's X15, Y0, Z negative 16. And these guys say exactly twice those values. So X30, Y0, you know, two times zero is zero. And then Z negative 32. So I'll just go ahead and set those guys to the right value. X15, tab over to the Z value and change it to negative 16 like so. Puts that right where it needs to be. Let's click on ID 80, same diff, change the X value to 15 and then change the Z value to negative 16. And we go ahead and absolutely fix that chair. Totally awesome in my opinion. Anyway, I'm gonna close that header item because that includes the entire chair. You know what? I'll just go ahead and name this entire chair because somehow or other it is that thing. And I'm gonna grab my camera rotate tool again and I'm going to go ahead and rotate the position of my view, and I might rotate it back and forth as well, and maybe side to side here by changing the Y orientation. And you know what? This isn't anywhere near the effect we want. So in the next and final exercise, I'll show you how to change the camera, the position, the size, the materials, the lights, and we'll ray trace the shadows. Join me, won't you?